Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we are covering Jast on the Sabame. Jast quite known for his uh his Sabame pick for this season for sure. And today we have Amir with us. How you doing today, Amir? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. I know that Jast has been one of our premier ADC players for a while now. Picking up, I think, Subame last season. I think he was playing a lot more like Aya, Isol, um, like AR characters, traditional ADCs, such as like the Nadine, Rio as well. Um, but yeah, last season he picked up the Subame and she has been one of, I think, his like premier picks ever since then. I, yeah, I, I know him for sure picking up his Nadine. I mean, his Nadine has been iconic for so many seasons. But I do believe you're right. Season 3, Jazz started to pick up the the Sabame. I completely just forgot the character that we're talking about today. <laughs> Sabame. You know, he was going to pick up the Sabame. And she now just got a rework, with, which has kind of put her on top uh, in a lot of time roles. Sort of giving her uh, a new kind of way to play as an ADC. And it's kind of been really reflecting in uh, the performance of a lot of the Sabami players. Yeah, because she went from being this character that kind of just ran around spamming ult. She was extremely ult reliant, where if you weren't pressing R on someone or getting three R's off in a fight minimum, it didn't really feel like you were playing the game to being this, uh, this dive ADC assassin that honestly, like she covers a lot of boxes, but the issue is that to cover all of these boxes, you need to understand what your character can do, what all of your opponent's characters can do, and really play around the potential of each of them. Exactly. And I actually think Sabami is probably the perfect example of a character like this for, for matchup specific stuff. She has so many kits to be able to dodge abilities where again, like exactly like this, like Jas just dodges the alt from a Kenneth by dashing sword as soon as Kenneth is looking to try and actually make that engagement, holding onto it perfectly. Uh, and the same thing can happen as well with, I do believe the, yeah, the art of camouflage, being able to jump to the wooden log. So understanding that really helps uh, mastering a character like Sabame. Yeah, even with them da dashing through, dodging the Kenneth R, we still almost lose the fight to Kenneth just auto attacking us twice right after, which just shows that you need to be able to actually go through with a lot of these skill checks that you'll find mid game where your opponent throws out an ability and you're somewhat required to dodge it otherwise you will lose the fight for sure and because i mean she takes an adc role she has that consistency damage of a lot of the adc characters but as you kind of mentioned she also now plays that dive role which makes her a lot more versatile with kind of characters like the elena that we're going to see here if they, you know, see a target and they try to commit into a fight, Sabami can follow that deep dive to make sure that whoever is the target that they want to get killed actually does fall down. Yeah, it will be nice. I don't know if we'll be seeing a lot of just instant dives with a lot or a lot this comp because uh, they're playing with the Adriana who usually wants to play a bit further back. We'll usually see the Adri throw a few things first and then we'll see the other two going after. But... I think we, at least knowing how Jast plays, we'll be seeing a lot of playing around the like very edge of a fight, playing ranges perfectly because Jast is known for that spacing. And then we'll be diving basically once the fight is a uh, once the fight's won. Exactly. Yeah, to secure all those kind of kills and make sure that everything gets kind of clean up. Mm -hmm. But I will also say we are seeing Jast on an 82% crit build. Subame used to not be able to crit, but with uh, with the change they make, they gave her this season, she uh, got the ability, and we sadly can't actually dodge the uh, the forget her name now uh, Abigail, Abigail ult, yeah, because um, she's not targetable when she ults, so we can't press our ult through it, and we already used the E, so we weren't able to dodge it, but we already put her to low enough health that it didn't matter, able to just clean it up right after, and yeah, we just run forward, pick up a few extra kills, and just use the rest of our abilities to run over to this tree as fast as possible before we get thirded. No, for sure. And I mean, definitely a little scary with the Emma. I mean, Emma, obviously, by herself, she can't risk a full commit, but it's terrifying to think that if Emma wanted there, she probably could have just, like, full sent and, like, one-shot someone, even on no items. 
Yeah, hopefully she just doesn't do that because uh, her going in for the full commit might leave uh, the rest of her team waiting in the lobby room. Oh, for sure. But hey, one for one, guys. It was worth. Trust, fast faith. <laughs> <laughs> Getting the extra RP might be nice. But I think we will be... Oh, we do actually prio the... Um... Forget the name. I think it is a uh, pedal torrent. Yeah, pedal torrent. From, uh, from just early because I was wondering if we pick the uh, cam. Sorry, ghillie suit or the pedal torrent because they're both built out of a tree and they are both pretty much staples on Tsubame now ever since ghillie suit was released. But I think we just prefer having the bonus passive. Uh, in full bloom from the pedal torrent as we do get a lot of bonus damage just for hitting people pretty sure four times which is our like sweet spot for Tsubame anyways as we do want to proc our passive by hitting people four times yeah I think I think that's absolutely it. I think the passive just weighs too much here and they haven't hit their their full crit yet so I think they're okay with just dropping it down from the 80 to to, to 50 percent yeah which is I mean, I'm actually surprised. I didn't realize that our weapon gave that much crit that early, but also we're going to see... Oh my god, the movement. We dashed back with the E after we... Sorry, we dashed back to the wood after the uh, after we used E1. Then we dashed through with R, and at that point, I think we just left Kenneth too dizzy that he didn't know what to do. Yeah, he kind of just fell, uh, fell right over... Ja I mean, again, also, like, as soon as the Stasis have a Jazz tried to keep chasing up onto the Elena and was going to try and follow, like, an Execute kill to get that Terminate going. Just slightly not able to get his extra gap close on to the Elena to be able to hopefully secure the kill. I think if uh, if we had a bit extra movement speed or Elena just didn't have E up, then we can easily pick up that kill as Jazz's aggression is actually very well timed with characters such like Tsubame because we have so many different util or different pieces of utility to be going forward and then instantly be going backwards or be going backwards and then instantly be going forwards we're basically turning fights on on a whim once we see the fight is possibly winnable and we're also seeing just I think buying the force core for our yeah. teammate, which oh wants to get the dragon's fury. It does to... make sense as dragon's fury does benefit our team very well. Uh, like once Adriana is able to throw a few uh, a few cocktails into the mix and reduce their defense, and Tsubame can kind of just jump in and and one shot anyone she wants. For sure, and I mean. Again, now we're also noticing she's back at 83% crit. And I think this is the main reason why uh, I think Jass is perfectly fine with giving up that weapon early for for Sabami. Because the second that we get Mithril Armband, that is our main crit back. Because we lose the crit on the weapon, but our arm piece didn't have crit until we go to Mithril Armband. And now that we've gone to Racing Boots, we're already at 91%. Yeah, I do think that we will be playing a 100% crit build this time instead of a 99% crit build. Because we do get, I think, 34 crit chance from our Mithril Armband. So when we get Ghillie Suit on top of uh, Racing Boots, we should be 100%. Which will be a lot of damage seeing that our weapon is 40% attack speed. And we do slam the Star of the Wild upgrade for our headpiece. So we'll be getting a lot of attack speed there as well, uh, alongside a bit of, uh, or, or sorry, heal cut. Yeah, really well statted spacing on, on Sabami. I mean, a lot of attacking, a lot of fast hitting, and it looks like, yeah, they're going to get the tree, which now is just going to be able to let them run the ghillie. So they're at 100%. They've got a high attack speed, almost actually a, a two, two attack speed, which is pretty crazy. That's going to let you just stack super fast and get the passive on your weapon to go. Yeah, and this is as we are level 16, so we still have a few more levels to get a few more bonus stats. And I think once we get level 20 plus we have Adrenaline all the way stacked, we'll be breaking the attack speed cap and pretty easily at that. For sure, which I believe actually is uh, Adrenaline the one that Adrenaline should allow you to actually break that, right? Break the attack um, speed cap? 
both adrenaline and uh, accelerator um, break the attack speed cap. The only difference is that adrenaline lets you break it until the until it's essentially over, and accelerator is for the three hits only. Which for Subame, when you're taking a lot of prolonged fights that kind of draw out a bit, you're kiting back and forth. Um, the accelerator, sorry, the adrenaline helps a lot more because you're able to to start kiting back and forth, diving, switching targets. Hopefully, after you finished fully procking your passive on a target as once you switch targets your passive stacks reset on the new target and then you're just like maybe upwards to, to 2.9 3.0 attack speed because i think our attack speed cap is 2.5 correct yeah it's 2.5 at the cap and yeah being able to just break past that on a character like this and just sort of stick to any target that you determine is on who you want to kill and just kind of turret them down is is definitely one of the greatest reasons why Sabami is so strong right now. High mobility, high capability of being able to just uh, turret people and and run them down. Yeah, because like we're at 2.11, level 17 right now. Adrenaline max stacks is definitely going to start helping come right close to that um, attack speed cap. Yeah, and alongside that, I'm realizing that Tsubame's build is really cheap. We only have, we have what, two trees, two meteorites, and a mithril? Compared to other characters where his Adriana is two force cores in like the first night, we are, oh my god, and we're just going trading one for one realizing that that's all we have to do is we take down one of their primary damage dealers, noticing that we don't have to be alive at this moment in time. It's not always too important to make sure that we're the carry because as long as we're able to remove their primary carry and our primary carry is still alive then the fight is won and i think that most of that is just because jast understood his target he understood what he had to do and and just went for it yeah i mean yeah definitely noticing the the eva being the primary carry on the team and taking it down a little unfortunate did get caught by the alonzo for for over diving and, and does get taken taken down on the trade but i mean definitely yeah worth it to take down such a high priority especially where you have adriana against uh, the eva at that point and like look at that like immediately priya almost dying instantly but the stasis Sadly, does catch him we are unable to actually dodge from the uh sorry from the marcus as i'm pretty sure the stasis ruined our plan weren't able to dash through the priya so oh we will be seeing i think yeah we're just gonna walk back try and make sure we're not wasting too much red timer Oh, wait, will we be able to... We are actually able to kill the Priya before it matters. Wasn't able to get the revive off. And it looks like Jast also will fall. I'm Got assuming it. we'll see the revive back in archery range. Let's get it off for free. Oh, Make for sure. Make sure you can get the objectives right after. Yeah, I mean, we have got plenty of credits. We'll be able to get the buyback. But yeah, I mean, if Priya didn't have stasis there, definitely uh, Sabami just kind of runs her down and she just dies instantly. Uh, but I don't think Joss was ready, didn't didn't check for that for that stasis and did kind of get caught off guard and a little bit overcommitted to it getting just taken picked off at the end. But I mean you saw it there. I mean a couple autos and she already had no HP. Yeah, three autos in. We're sending Priya to half HP. It is very much of a one-sided fight there. But also it looks like we are contesting this box. We're gonna see Arlena diving in first, and we're just playing the side, what? making sure that we can just dodge out of anything that the Tazia throws. Going for the final kill as well. I really like this, resetting cooldowns, making sure that we have things up. And then we just keep going forward. I don't actually even know what we dashed through. I think we dashed through one of the wolves to make sure that we were in range to keep hitting the Abigail. Yeah, and I think okay, this is a this is a good example of what Jast has been trying to do. The last two fights that we watched with Jast, it didn't look as clean as what this happened here. He knew his targets. He waited for it. He had the opportunity. He instantly eliminated the, the Emma from the fight. I don't think Emma even had an opportunity to do her combo. And then at that point, it's just a clean sweep. The damage burst that Sabami has is crazy. If he determines that he wants to take the target down, the target is most likely going down. Yeah, I think another thing that's really underestimated about Tsubame is the fact that you're able to stack your adrenaline passive stacks off the frontliner and then start dashing through the frontline to start to get to the backline with your adrenaline fully stacked and 
broken the attack speed cap, you're hitting so fast with 100% crit rate, a lot of attack power, that they should be falling over pretty easily. Yeah, and let's see that. Let's see that play in in style here as we're, we're building up the stacks on the Alonzo. I'm waiting for that jump into to Starby or into the Eva and just kind of running them down. Yeah, I think I was so happy seeing Jast go forward and then actually use the E again to go back to the uh, to the block of wood, and we will be seeing him go forward again, just making sure that we get the full kill, getting some bonus HP, and then. Just adrenaline fully stacked, 2.5 uh, yeah, attack speed. Sadly, not able to break the cap too far. We're not seeing insane numbers on the attack speed. But breaking the attack speed cap still is a lot. We're gaining, what, like 40% attack speed just from an augment alone. And that is an insanely good usage of our E. Using E in the bush walking up to the other bush, warding it, and instantly eating back to make sure that we're able to get vision, as Subame is a bit of a lower range marksman, unable to get bush checks. For sure, just trying to get that pressure. But yeah, it's like, it's really crazy to just kind of see what what this character can do, because it, uh, like, obviously, like we were talking about, you know, the game plan of uh, building up stacks on, like, the, t the frontline tank, like Alonzo, was sort of the initial probably game plan, but his the teammates never even came to help Alonzo. And at that point, it was just kind of free food. Even a tank kind of gets shredded down. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about with a character like Sabame right now is a lot of ADCs are all in this kind of state right now where they're doing really good at building cheap builds with a lot of high damage. Like you mentioned, this build is extremely cheap. It's got 100% of crit, you know, 330 attack power. It's got a ton of attack speed. Like, the ghillie suit being so good as a tree item. I uh, we, we have, like, the mithril armband being seen a lot. These racing boots have been seen a lot on ADCs. So, a lot of characters are just kind of picking up these really cheap builds and capitalizing a ton of damage on them. Oh, the stasis yeah. instantly. I guarantee that we're just about to see this instantly blow up. And, yeah, they're instantly gone. Yeah, sadly, the instant stasis leaves us in the middle of, uh, of our opponents and... Seeing the blink three on uh, on Artazia as well, we're just we are so ballsy, just running forward, willing to throw a few autos back at the Wick team. By the way, this is not just any team, but yeah, being able to oh my god, we do actually don't have a second to talk about it. We're just seeing him dash forward and make sure that we remove someone from the game. Sadly, I think we will be falling down. No, we're able to. Oh, close that, though. Good attempt. I mean, Absolutely. honestly, great, great protection from Slim, blinding the uh, the Emma to try and prevent it. Emma trying to, to grief Jast right now, take him out. Yeah, trying to make sure that is uh, the rest of Froge's game would be pretty good. Sadly, I think that our Adriana is able to make sure that we're able to deny the space, and yeah, we're able to get Jast up and Jast just instantly eing forward. I mean, again, it's, yeah. it, you know, Jas is just trying to find those angles. Like, we saw that onto, like, the the Marcus. So the third party didn't show up. Like, that was a completely clean win for Jas' team. Like, he knew the Marcus had no way of getting to him. He just kind of wailed the free autos until eventually he just collapsed. Yeah, and then we also see at the bottom, sadly, they were able to get the Marcus up, but the Priya was able, was rated for it. So, I assume this team will be playing to hunt a few of the leftover teams because it doesn't look like there's any... Oh no, there's one full team still left in the lobby. Um, but I do think that Jast's team is the strongest here as we're just jumping forward, challenging Abigail, and putting her on the floor instantly. Okay, that okay, that one was a little bit of a ballsy play from Jazz. He dashed and then immediately blinked on top of the Abigail just to guarantee that she had no way to get away from him. I mean, sometimes those are the plays that you need to look for. When you're playing a character that is as hit or miss on just having the mechanical ability to to make some of these plays as jast is with this uh with this ibame i think it's uh it's pretty fair also we're going to see him just queue over the bush and the damage coming over to jast this is something that always surprises me about people that play ibame this character takes so much damage like as we saw the abigail earlier jast took so much damage just just from, I think, QD skill and ult, he went down to half health. But this character's, all of her defensive abilities and defensive, I guess, defensive stats are put into the fact that she has so many different abilities to dash out of different targets. 
is W to get the movement speed, E to dash twice, and Alt to dash through a target as well. Yeah, I think that's a big, big thing to kind of realize about Sabame. She's a short range character. She's got a ton of mobility, but an insane amount of damage. But the trade off is, is that you really don't have the luxury of being able to like have high defense, like d die really quickly. You take a lot of damage in this type of character fight. Yeah, and we will be seeing the final fight coming out here. I think most of the time, hopefully, I want to say that we see Jast stack up on the Estelle, um, or actually we're seeing Tank Luke here as well. Estelle or Luke, and then diving to the back, finding the angle onto the ISIL, remove the ISIL from the fight, and then... I almost think I almost think it's gonna be that um we're gonna we're gonna just see him shred a tank here. I think that yeah, the the ton here. of damage right onto the Luke like Luke is just getting completely obliterated. Yeah, and then watching Jest use every single mobility tool is it it just feels like they were built for him. Ease forward, ease backwards to make sure he's dodging the uh all of the different damage. And then the second that we see the Luke R-ing and the Estelle R. We're blinking backwards to make sure we're dodging it. There's so much coming out from him. Absolutely. And I mean, that is one of the best ways to sort of capitalize on Sabame. And that'll be it for this one, guys. We'll see you in the next one.